Welcome back dudes. Day is gone, episode 20. We're uh... Boss Lake to Deacon St. John, are you there? Uh, yeah, Ricky, what's up? Iron Mike says you volunteered to stick around, do some runs for the camp, but that you refuse to work for Schizo. Yeah, something like that. Well, I can't say I blame you. Okay, well, I guess I'm stuck with you. So stop by the mechanic shop. Uh, we've got a job for you. Yeah, okay. Deacon up. Okay. Uh, basically... Deacon, you there? Yeah, Ricky, what's up? I just wanted to say... I I'm sorry about what happened to Boozer. Yeah, probably not as sorry as he is. Yeah. Look, Addy wanted you to know that if you hadn't brought her that list of knife, Boozer would be in a hell of a lot more pain right now. Yeah, well, it just made it easier for you to carve him up. Anyway, I... We hope he makes it. He's my friend too, you know? Shine on. Hey, listen. Shine on. Thanks for bringing us in, Bricky. I, <clears throat> I gotta go. Deacon out. Shine on, dudes. You may have noticed. Yeah, I was uh, trying to get into the intro saying, hey, look, uh, we did some heavy stuff last episode. Um, we're just going up to Sarah's memorial stone to, uh, to check things out. You know, well, that's what we do when we get some heavy stuff. We go ahead and up there. And then obviously we had uh, Ricky talking to us on the radio. But yeah, you've probably noticed uh, I do try not to swear. So uh, you, you'll hear me say things like shine on and things like that. I need to get some supplies going because I've got zero medical stuff. So this is probably going to be a short one whereby we just run up to the memorial stone. Uh, Talk to, I guess, uh, talk to the memory of Sarah, because, you know, she was never there. But yeah, that, that last episode, man, that's, I, I'm still feeling that. It still hurts. And I know what you're saying. I know yeah, it's, it's real stupid, right? It's like, um, it's a game. These people, you know, they, they, they don't exist, right? They're just pixels. It's a well-written story, you know, at least as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and I've had a lot of, of comments of people basically praising the story and telling me things like, you know, oh, just you wait, things like that. I, I am, I'm digging it, you know. I, I love a well-written story. Um, yeah, I know, uh, I could just basically skip through all of this. Uh, we just go straight to the action-y parts, things like that. But I, you know, as this is my first experience, I, I would like to share as much of it with you dudes as possible. Uh, basically, I'm cutting out the travel time. That's it. Uh... Yeah, so I mean, ammo's full. Can you get bandages from police cars? I don't think you can, right? That's fine. Might as well fill up while we're here, right? But yeah, um, because you know, obviously this is this is blind. I'm trying to keep as much of it intact as by well. like the editing. I don't do a lot of editing with this. Uh, I cut, as I say, I, I cut down the travel time. Or if I die and I have to get back to somewhere, I tend to cut that down. The rest of it, I leave in as much as possible, trying to more or less keep it like a stream, you know. Ah, that's right. I gotta finish burning out this infestation zone. Mm. Yeah, I was given some handy tips about that on the map as well, like uh, nest the like, little, little red squares. Just looking at it, yeah, okay. 
a lot of this is probably going to get edited out because it's three kilometers. Come back later and finish burning out these nests. Yeah, three kilometers is, uh, is three kilometers, right? Low. Let me see if I can fast travel. An idea, right? So where are we headed? We're heading all the way up to here, yeah, right? I mean, I can travel to Hot Springs, which will get me pretty close. I don't like Hot Springs because I don't like I don't like Tucker. I think we're, we're all very uh, familiar with my feelings on Tucker at the minute. Uh, so now I hope Ripper's tear a whole camp apart. Which is bad because she got a lot of innocent people in that camp. Wow, it took us down to 5%. So we're going to have to go in anyway. Um, fill up some juice. All right, we're, we are on fumes. It's alright. Open it up. I ain't doing a job for Tucker, I mean, I... Although, you know what? I do love me killing some rippers. I'll sell some meat, though, if I've got meat. I got, yeah, i got a load of wolf meat. That's all I got. Yeah. We get a lot of cash for it, though, did we? I'm just going to fill up the bike. We're not going anywhere near Tucker unless we're allowed to run a rover. Mm. Sure, maybe. What can I get for you? Hey, Zanny. Keeping your hands clean. I ain't even going to fraternize with you, dude. We're going to run out of this someday, you know. Yeah, I'm sure. Okay, then. I'm ready, then, man. Thanks for stopping by. Hey, a deacon, right? Zanny. See you later, Tucker. Let me get the gate for you. Do that. Patty, you there? Deke and St. John to Lost Lake Infirmary. Come back. Deke! Hey. Uh, feeling a little out of it, you know. You okay? What's going on? Boozer. Hey. Uh, nothing. I, uh, got tired of listening to the Radio Free Oregon. You know, he takes so much of his truth to bullshit, you know? Deke, uh, Eddie told me how I'd be dead if it weren't for you. Getting the N.I. whatever the fuck, so. Uh, Boozer, I, uh, it must have been fun. Uh, holding me down while she fucking whacked away at me. <laughs> no. Remember how, uh, a Jack carved up that turkey last time we was all together? <laughs> it kept slipping all over the goddamn table. Yeah, booze man. I remember. I still feel it, you know. The knife. Worse than the rippers. If, if you hadn't been there to... I'm sorry, man. ...to hold me down. I don't know what would have happened to you. I don't know. Well, it's done, Boozer. It's done. It's over. No, it's not. Uh, Deke, uh, sorry, I'm feeling, feeling a little woozy. Yeah, uh, hey, Addie's gonna kill me if she finds out you're out of bed fucking around. Yeah, I, I hear a bunk, uh, calling my name. Lost Lake signing off. Hey, listen, Boozer. <laughs> Boo shit. Hurts, man. And again, I know I, sh I shouldn't give uh, you know any any hoots. Shouldn't give any cares at all. Uh, again, we're looking for bandages, materials, things like that. Uh, this is basically going to be a short maintenance episode. We're getting supplies for us. We're going up to the grave. And like I said, I know that I shouldn't. I shouldn't care. No. They're just. Uh, the pixels, the, the, the stories, you know. It feels kind of raw, you know what I mean? Like, I, I, I had a suspicion he was going to either die from his wounds or 
or lose the arm, you know. But then the fact that we had to hold him down while it was happening, that's, uh, yeah, that wasn't cool. Very realistic, um, from a story's perspective, you know. This is a this is a very very well written game, at least as far as I'm concerned, you know. It's just uh it just it hits you with the feels, you know. Is that all I can do? I can't actually get inside said ambulance, alright, okay. But it's like, uh, I mean, I don't know how high they had to do it. I think it was probably a below the elbow kind of deal. Or possibly uh, above the elbow. I don't think it was at shoulder level. I don't, medically, I don't really know that that makes too much difference, you know. Other than the, uh, as I say, we're just, we're just literally just looking around. Any, any medical supplies that we can swipe. Um, yeah, I don't know. I know someone that's got um, a dead arm, should we say. Uh, they had a motorcycle accident when they were very young, and they basically, their left arm, completely dead. From, from shoulder down. No. Yeah, yeah. The whole thing, basically, can't move it. I mean, I don't know if he can, like, move the shoulder like that or whatever, but the arm itself, you know, there's nothing there. That springs guess, but cool. I don't know if that's important or not. All right, we've got a few uh, things. I'd like to have some uh, some bandages, but, you know, we've we got a few, a few supplies, a few bits and pieces. But, given time, he'll adapt. What makes it worse is if I'm it's been like what 20 episodes so you know my memory's a little bit hazy I'm fairly sure it was our fault like yeah it all started right because because of because of our bike right that's that's how it started right our bike um is blue blue like a, a part or something Oh, hang on, that's got bad damage, right? What do we got? Yeah, I'll go for this. Machete. Yeah, basically, our, our bike, um, I forget what the part was. <sighs> Fuel can. Sure, it was an important part. I'm not like a mechanic, so I couldn't tell you. But yeah, our bike uh, lost a, a component, we've just seen to say. And rather than writing it off, we had to go. Oh, uh, dude, wow. Look at him over there. He's just going for it. You know, we had to go uh, all by ourselves and uh, get a replacement piece. And while we were doing that, you know, we, we, we left Boozer by himself. And that's when the Rippers got him, you know, they, they did horrible, horrible things. You know. So, you could argue. From our from our perspective, that because we we had to get that bike part, that it's our fault because of that, you know. The other argument is obviously we we held him down while while she did it. Now, I know it was necessary. Absolutely, it was necessary. Without a doubt, right? But we're still responsible. You know. Is is Boozer going to be able to look past that? Is he going to be able to forgive? But because the ultimate question is, would we be able to forgive? I don't think we can. So knowing the main character is, is you know, we're getting we're getting to know him quite a bit. I heard footsteps. 
but it saves me. I'm still looking for medical supplies while I'm here. But, um, yeah, knowing Mr. St. John, the way we're getting to know him, he, I'm thinking he's going to carry the weight of this for the rest of his life. And if anything happens to that little girl, Lisa, anything happens to Lisa, he is going to carry the weight of that as well. Without a doubt, you know. And I don't know. I've I've got very very bad. As I, say, I don't want spoilers because this this story is this is amazing. But I got a very very bad feeling about what's going to happen with Lisa. And. So why, why am I rambling on like this? It's like, oh man, we don't care. Just get on with the game. Play the game, man. Play the game. We don't care. We don't want to know what you're thinking and what you're doing. Is that medical? Yoink. I'm just giving you uh, some sort of insight into what's going on up here. Which admittedly, not a lot's going on because... I'm about as stupid as you get. Hmm. Well, I heard something. Nothing like scrap. Yeah, I'm just checking because um, if you if you noticed last episode, I got into a lot of trouble with a dude that was more or less unkillable. I mean, he was eating my ammo like they were Tic Tacs, and he didn't even, you know, nothing. Didn't even blink. I was shotgunning him to the face. Nothing. Alright, so we can probably craft a couple. I, I would like to get up to full capacity, but, you know. You gotta make do with what you get, right? Hey, me again. So, uh, I took Boozer into the Lost Lake camp, and I know, <laughs> I know, I told you I was never going back there with Iron Mike threatening to break my neck and all, but didn't have a choice. See, Boozer, Boozer was gonna die, and, uh, well, he still didn't want to go. Hell, I didn't want to go, but, like I said, didn't have a choice. Neither of us did, so it didn't matter. He, um... He lost the arm anyway, and and now he's stuck. I mean, we're stuck. Goddamn schizo. You know, I can't remember if I told you about this clown, but he's the kind of asshole that's glad all this shit went down. <laughs> he says he was uh, gangbanging in Sacramento and Fresno. I don't remember, but he says he's not from around here, and he's he's not. Claims he was dealing drugs and guns from California to Oregon, and then everything mm. went to hell. And you know what? I think he's full of shit. To me, he kind of looks like a frat boy, like he was on the lacrosse team peddling sodas at a mini mart. Or no, 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 man. He would have <laughs> he would have had a cushy job at his old man's accounting firm, making copies and getting everyone their morning coffee. You know, making more in a day than I've ever made in a week. You know, it's this game the boozer and I used to play before we rode out of Lost Lake for good. We used to call it, uh, Who You Were. You know, we'd look at someone, we'd try to guess who they were before the shit went down, you know? Hmm. You know, I met a few drug addicts, a lot of ex-cons, uh, no accountants. So, that makes sense, if you think about it. First hmm. couple of weeks after the shit went down, I mean, Jesus, that was a freak show. Yeah, There's but... no way some accountant or pencil pusher lived through that shit, so I don't know, maybe it's because I was telling the truth. I'm not sorry that you missed it. I'm not. Anyway, Boozer and I wanted to head north and get away from all this shit, but that that ain't happening anytime soon, or, or happening ever. Uh, hey, <laughs> look on the bright side. Looks like you're uh, stuck with me. Okay, I'll stop by later. See you. 
Yeah, I don't know. Besides. If you survived something like the balloon going up is what we're going to call it. End of the world as we know it, all that stuff. It's, uh, it's like you said, if you ever see the movie 28 Days Later. With uh, Cillian Murphy. He he, has, he gets attacked by a boy that's infected. And he has to kill the boy. And later on, he's talking to a soldier. And the soldier's like, who have you killed? That's a question, you know, just out of the blue. Like, who have you killed? And he, he's like, nobody. He's like, you know what? We've all killed somebody to get to this point. And yeah, if you survived the uh, the balloon going up, you would have to change. You know, you you would be different people. This is uh, what brings me back to Lisa, and uh, and why? Well, part of the reason why it really hits me because she's been on her own for what was it, two, three years, something like. And um, this is horrible, just like body is just dumped. You know, she's been on her own for like two or three years. So far, she hasn't let it change her, you know. She she's still she's still an innocent kid. Um Obviously, I don't know what's happened since then, because um, she's ran off. Uh, she got scarred up by the Rippers. They, they cut her up. They cut her face up. And innocence has to be protected. I'm not saying that you can remain innocent forever. I, I can't get out of here. You know she would have to grow in this world she would have to become tough and I don't mean like um, you know like, like uh, you know like like uh, like for example um, Terminator now I know it gets a lot better but you take Terminator 1 Terminator 2 okay you can stop the franchise there if you like Personally, I don't mind the franchise as something I can put on and just watch. But, say Terminator 1, Terminator 2. In Terminator 1, we've got Sarah Connor, who is... Let's, let's be honest, she is a bad waitress. And by bad, I mean absolutely awful at her job as a waitress. Second one. By the time we get there, she is she is someone that you would not mess with, you know. Okay, so we got to talk to Ricky uh, back at Iron Mike's, which is very, very far away. Oh, you are. All right. Out here, there ain't nothing but murderers and drifters and murderers. You know what I mean? Wow, look at you hiding behind the log. Uh, reloading, go for you. So I believe kids should be allowed to be kids. I mean, don't get me wrong. You'd have to, you do have to learn responsibilities. You do have to grow up. All right, dude. Let me get you out of there. You're not gonna make it out here. I know where there's a camp. Camp? Where? Where? Show me. I'll go. Hot Springs? No. Uh, Copeland's camp. Yeah. I right, go to Iron Mike's, dude. At the Lost Lake, ask for Ricky Patel, she'll take you in. You got a lot of trust out of that. I was, I was done for. 
Oh shit! Don't worry about it, dude. Don't worry about it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh man. Tell oh, him the deacon. They'll know. Stay yeah. Off the main road. Probably best not to Stop. tell them it was us. They don't really like us. Um. Yeah, I mean this episode's kind of all over the place with my uh, my commentary, my narration. Uh, the reason being, all the stuff that happened to Boozer is still. You know what I mean? It's, it's still. Still digging away. Shit, someone needs help. Alright, hang on. Hang on. Smile. Hey, cheese. Fuck. Dude, you are not going down, are you? Hey, wrong button. Just trying to roll with circle. Get off. Just trying to roll with circle. Don't ask why. Yeah, all right. Where are you? In this car, right? Hold on, hold on, I'm coming. Calm down, calm down. Bring it down, look. Up notches. There's a camp. What camp? Show me. Where? Wow, so I, I, I still get a hundred, a thousand bits of trust going to my mics. Uh, Copeland's camp. I, I got to build up trust there as well, so I'm going to divide them. It's going to be half Copeland, half Iron Mike. Hot Springs. Peaceful Lake. Mark mm. Copeland. It's safe there. <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, God sent you. I didn't give it up. I was going to die. <laughs> right. You're still going to die if you don't hurry up. Come on. Was Deacon. They'll know. I yeah, yeah. Running, stay off the roads. Yeah, stay off the roads. Ah, uh, come on. We need a petrol can, dudes. Look at, look at, look at this jerk. How far away am I from the old petrol station? That's the question. Oh, that's a deer. Uh, I was about to say, oh, no, it's a wolf. Wolf, come in. Beautiful. Beautiful animals, just don't hit them because they'll kill the bike. Hey, stay over your side, dude. Don't pump the pedal, we're just going to coast for a bit. Got to be getting close, right? Yeah, I got to check the map. I'm getting close. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to get there. But I'm getting close. Try and free will it as my oh, great uphill. All right, we are basically we are out. Oh. You're crossing the road two years ago, you would have gone splat. <laughs> Best time to run out, dude. Absolutely. Pick it up. Anybody coming? I'll take these dudes out. Alright, let's push the bike. This is humiliating. Absolutely humiliating. How far away? Um, petrol station just there, right? Big infestation zone as well. We're just going to keep going on to that one. Oh, yeah. Go. Ah, I need fuel. Yeah, you do, dude. Yeah, you do. No kidding, right? 
I don't know, I mean... This is right arm. So I don't think he's going to be able to ride again, but... I don't know, I mean... I, I love, um... I say I love my... Apocalypse survival stuff and all that. There is absolutely no way I would survive any of it. It's a drifter. Hmm. Open up. No chance. We're going to see what the job is for Iron Mike. Um... Yeah. I mean, I've got a bit of editing to do, but I'm trying to think, have I given you much in the episode? And the answer is no, so. So where is Iron Mike? Oh, I've got to see Ricky, right? Ricky's got a job for me. Let's fill up the old... Yeah, yeah, fill it up. Okay, okay. I'll top you off. I don't ever want to run out of fuel again. Later. Ricky. Let's start this thing. What's going on? No idea how to fix it. Yeah, job available. Come on. Oh. Hey, Ricky, you said nice you had a then. job for me? Hey, Deke. Yeah. You remember Shane Riley? Everyone called him Red. Red Riley. Yeah, never heard of him, but let me guess. Ginger? Look, like red hair? No. It was his boots. He wore these rattlesnake boots dyed with god awful red color. He made quite the impression. No. <laughs> no. Just, just no. Anyway, he used to do runs for us back in the day until one day he decides he didn't like the camp credits we were paying. Absolutely. So he up and kills Lindsay Fuller. Who? Lindsay. Works supply before Blair. Wait a second. So he killed an unarmed woman? Oh, she was armed. She just wasn't expecting him to shoot her in the face. Will you listen? Oh, there you go. So Red murders her, cleans out her supply hut, and then takes off before anyone knows what's happened. Got away clean. Oh, that son of a bitch. Until now. He and his men have been spotted up at Camp Pioneer. You don't gotta ask. I, uh, I got this thing about him. About killing unarmed women. I know. So I knew you'd want to handle it. Yeah, like I said, I got this covered. Um, what else can you tell me about him? Not much. Oh, wait. He chews tobacco. I heard he was such an addict that Ooh. he rounds up cigarette butts, takes out the tobacco, and chews that. Oh, dude. Oh, that's disgusting. So now I got two reasons to kill him. Yeah, but be careful, Deke. Oh, that, that sounds awful. So, yeah, the, re the reason I'm making the face is because what have I got to go on? I've got to find a guy that, A, chews tobacco, B, has a pair of red boots. So, I could end up getting the wrong person. If Here for your bike. it just so happens that he's been robbed of his uh, shiny red boots I mean, by someone who chews tobacco. Yeah, we're going to do this mission, then we're going to call it for today. Uh, you guys have had a lot of uh, me being morbid, which I'm sorry about. That. It's the ones that fly at you like a rabid squirrel that I'm not overly keen on, you know. There's a lot of them about because it's night time, dude. Like that. <laughs> My fault. Absolutely my fault. How much damage did we do? As I said, 93%. That's fine. 93% is a scratch. Hey, Ricky. I'm at Camp Pioneer, and it is a goddamn war zone. What's going on? Are any of our guys there? Uh, no, I don't think so. Sounds like they're clearing freaks. Uh, don't worry. Find this guy. Deacon out. We're gonna, we're gonna leave the bike over here just in case. I hope he doesn't run on the bike because I could be screwed. Right, let's try and sneak in, shall we? All right, Red. Where the hell are you? <clears throat> newts. Oh, wow, they're killing newts. It's right. Okay, so they're freaky kids. Hello. Men coming. <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, you just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, right? Mm -hmm. How many people are in here? A lot, I'd imagine, right? 
This is a big old camp and I'm just running through like a fool. Huh? That was awful. Bear true. This is like um like a summer camp kind of thing. Got any indication as to where Red's gonna be with his big red boots? Now, if I was a fella named Red, where would I be, right? We'd be out somewhere wearing red boots. This guy, he's got to take a leak and he's going to take the exact bush that I'm hiding in. What are the odds, right? Hmm. Where are you, Red? Oh, that looks like a big important house, doesn't it? Okay, so that's a thing. Are they just standing there. One of them's walk. One of them's standing down and one's walking back. Right. Cool. I think he's got to be in this big building here, right? I don't know what their Aggie range is. Is he going to see me? No. Cool. I love that. Yeah, I'd say if my name was Red and I wore big red boots, I'd be in here. Where the fuck are you hiding, Red? He's got to be here somewhere. He is, dude. This guy over here, he saw nothing upstairs. No, you didn't. No, you didn't. No, you don't. Here, catch this! Blow his up! Dude, you ain't gotta be rude about it, man. How's that? Thanks. Wow, he is tough. He's tough. I'll give him that. Uh, one of them had a weapon, right? Like a melee weapon. Uh, yeah, I know. Like, hey, man, you got a gun. Why don't you use the gun? Mine now. Uh, can I... I'm going to repair it. There we go. That'll work. Oh, yeah. Uh, where did it... I don't know. Where'd he go? Cool. So where am I going? Um, I'm supposed to search a cabin for him, right? This place is a mess, dude. You, you got to clean up your kitchen, man. You cannot have this mess in the kitchen area. I work with food. I know what I'm talking about with regards to that. So where is he? He's not in here, obviously. I got keys for some cabin. How am I doing? Uh, I'm fine. Uh, no, we'll, we'll go back to the melee weapon. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I could buy a machine gun. Uh, I could take a machine gun. I don't want to. I don't like the. We got the trading post. Here. 
they see me. Kill the son of a bitch! Yeah, go for it. No, you don't. Yeah, what is he doing running around like that? He's crazy. Get up here, dude. Jump. Jump. No. Alright, you guys can stay up there. That's fine. I will find some cabin with uh, with red in it. Oh, that's first aid. Oh no, freakers. Right, so we gotta try and find a cabin. That's what we're doing. Hello. be a way up to him, right? Yeah, yeah, there's got to be a way up to them. Must be. He's on your side. They get up there, right? Hello. Here we go. Don't start nothing. Won't be nothing, right? Cool. So, search cabins for Red Riley. These are cabins, right? Have I been up here? Probably not. Run away, dude. If you run away... Never mind. See, I got a key for um, some cabin. So I'm assuming he's, he's in a cabin with like a door. Right. I don't know where he is though. Not my smartest move. That could have done a lot of damage. So where is he? One thing about this game, as I say, is sometimes looking for stuff can get a little bit too much, you know? That was brutal. Hiding in one of these shacks, huh? You had it coming. One that I shot? Mouthing off to me. Come on, Come on out. Is this all about that Vince got herself killed back at Iron Mike's? There he is. Where? Oh, was that him? Oh yeah, look at the boots. Big red boots. Huh? Who knew, right? Guess we're going back to see Iron Mike and then we're gonna end the episode. Yeah, big red boots. I know, I should use uh, my shotgun more for people. Um, I like to save it when I need it, you know. It's like that, um, that Red Hot Chili Peppers song. Wow. Well, that's a stupid place to put a signpost, isn't it? We'll pretend that didn't happen. It's like a Red Hot Chili Peppers song, you know, the one that starts... Wee. 
you know, you know. If you don't, don't worry about it. Hello, we missed the bridge. I'm having all kinds of issues here. Oh, they're right behind me. Get them. Good job, man. Good job. Yeah, I'm still super enjoying this game. Like It would be so easy for me to sit here and just uh, play this solid like, the entire day, you know. So, the fact that I don't pick this up again. See, we've we've grounded. I play that in the off time because there's a lot of things I can do that don't need to be on camera, like building bases things like that. This game, every time I pick it up, I feel like you do just need to be watching. You know, not need to be with them. Every time I pick it up, I feel like I don't want you dudes to miss any of this. You know what I mean? Makes sense. I mean, okay, so I know that was basically, that was just a basic mission today. Uh, a lot went wrong. You need something? Yeah. Hey, how's it going? A lot of stuff went wrong, basic mission. But, Probably draining a lot of gas as it's my first playthrough, I feel like I don't want to cut any of that out, other than, you know, travel time. I'll be here. That makes sense. Later, Deke. Laters, man. Hey. Hey, Ricky, I got him. Deacon, what a relief. Lindsay has some folks she was close to. I'll let him know. Yeah, okay. I'll see you around, Ricky. Mm, we, we got a nice bit of trust out of that. Cash money's building up again. Which is nice. Hey man. Just right. looking around. Yeah, hey man. Alright dudes. If you're enjoying the series and you haven't already, give the video a like. It really helps out, trust me. And uh, if you're new around here, subscribe. Because I'd love to see you again. And trust me, I, I'm, I'm what you call a small. Very small time creator. And that, everything like that. Likes, comments, subscribing. All of that really helps. Uh, any any hints or tips without being spoilery because I've had some some great tips uh, just pop it down in the comments below if you want to hit me up about anything same deal just pop it down in the comments below until next time my dudes keep calm and wizard on